This video is brought to you by my supporters on Patreon, Buy Me A Coffee, NASIO and YouTube. If you wish to support me, you can find the links below. If you or someone you know experiences painful periods, you know how bad that time of the month can be. But imagine the same thing 50,000 years ago, when we lived a hunter-gatherer lifestyle, when we were in the wild. Wouldn't a period be a bad thing to have? I mean, blood can attract predators, being in pain can leave someone unable to escape from predators. Imagine a prey animal that has to constantly worry about safety when their time of the month comes. All this makes no evolutionary sense. Natural selection would have gotten rid of such a lousy trait a long time ago, right? But it seems like evolution suddenly turned stupid and made this nonsense move. Or is there more to it? Let's get to the bottom of this. You're watching Science Do. My name's Pranav. Let's begin. Let's start with the basics. What is a period? Periods or menstruation is simply the cyclical shedding of the uterine lining known as the endometrium, blood and mucus. This typically lasts 4 to 7 days and about 40 ml of blood is lost in the process. First of all, do all animals go through this? No, only mammals. And that too, only 2% of mammals are known to have a menstrual cycle. Other mammals have what's known as an estrus cycle. You'd have seen your pet cat or dog going into heat. That is if they're not neutered. When they're howling like mad or go crazy looking for a mate or getting into a fight simply for the opportunity to mate. These changes in behavior are because of their estrus cycle. They're like animal versions of those hot singles in your area ads where some species display visible outward signs of being in heat like engorged or colorful private parts or displays to attract a mate. And this only happens once or twice or a couple of times a year, a period known as the mating season. If these animals had a smartphone, this would be a time when their tinder is blowing up. But jokes aside, it's clear now why they have all these visual changes and behavior changes and they act as if they're desperate to find a mate, it's because survival and reproduction are the two things driving evolution. They've the small window to find a mate and it happens like once or twice a year or if you're lucky a couple of times a year. And if you don't find a mate, your genes are looking at a one-way road to possible extinction. Now, unlike a menstrual cycle, in the estrus cycle, there is no shedding of the endometrium from the uterus. What some owners may mistakenly believe is a period in your pet dog, like this owner did, may be bleeding before mating, in anticipation of mating. But unlike a period, it does not come from the uterus, it comes from the vagina. Also, in an estrus cycle, the thickening of the endometrium happens only after fertilization. Meaning, unless the animal gets pregnant, the endometrium doesn't go through all these changes and there's no need to shed it. Which means there's no period, but for some animals things wouldn't be so easy. The human fetus, thanks to our big brains, is extremely resource hungry. As a result, the placenta digs deep into the mother's uterus and comes in direct contact with the mother's bloodstream so as to get as many nutrients as possible to the fetus. This is extremely dangerous for the mother's safety because if something goes wrong, it can lead to massive blood loss, maybe even death. Just look at the high cost to the mother. She's risking so much and giving so many nutrients to a fetus and carrying it to term. She can't risk doing that with an unviable fetus or with an unhealthy one or with a fetus that has some genetic abnormality. So to make sure it's a strong and healthy one, only a placenta that can penetrate this thick uterine lining would mean that the fetus would potentially be carried to term. So this uterine lining needs to be thickened in anticipation of an embryo. So it happens whether or not fertilization occurs. If it occurs, then that leads to pregnancy and the fetus is potentially carried to term. But if it doesn't, then this thickened uterine lining can't be maintained. It has to be shed. And that is what results in a period. One thing that has to be noted here is that since menstruating mammals ovulate once every cycle, they are fertile throughout the year. They have no mating season and they have no outward signs of heat. 
This also led to stronger and longer lasting societal bonds, the kind that can be seen in higher order primates. By the way, you see this conflict between the fetus and the mother. Very often in evolution, we see this kind of conflict. Here's an example. A very obvious conflict would be the sprinting predator and prey. If the predator evolves to run faster and catch the prey, then the prey also has to evolve to run faster so it can evade the predator. But if it gets too fast, then the predator also has to evolve to run even faster so it gets food and survives. And whoever is able to survive will pass on those faster running genes to the next generation. It's like two opposing forces that grow until they find an equilibrium point of appropriate speed and then those traits that form the equilibrium are selected. Today we have a cheetah and a Thompson's Kessel that have specific top speeds that can sustain that equilibrium. Now you could ask me here Pranam, why can't the predator keep evolving and keep increasing their speed forever? Or why can't the prey evolve to keep running even faster? That will improve its survival rate. A very good question. It's because there's another conflict now. I'll show you. To run even faster, the animal has to expend more energy. Meaning it has to eat more and have bigger and stronger muscles that can generate that kind of power. But being bigger automatically means being heavier and that makes it harder to run faster. So there's another pair of opposing forces, the size and speed of the animal. To reach that optimal speed, a cheetah can only get this big. And over generations, an equilibrium will be reached for the size and and the speed and optimal size and speed. The conflict is not always between two traits in two different animals. It can be two traits of the same animal, like size and speed in this case. And that speed is also part of another equilibrium with the speed of the prey. Whenever there is a conflict between two traits, the ones that can sustain an equilibrium are selected over generations. And those are the ones we see in nature. This is called an evolutionary arms race. And we're going to see that more often whenever we talk about evolution. There is a conflict here also, a maternal fetal conflict where the fetus says, give me all your nutrients. And the mother says, not unless you are strong and healthy and can implant yourself in this thick uterine layer. So these two opposing forces ended up in an equilibrium where humans have a thick endometrial lining that needs to be shed every month if there's no pregnancy. This is what happens in mammals that have this kind of really invasive placenta, a menstrual cycle. But how often does it happen? Okay, let's play a game. I'll show you two mammals. You try and guess which one has menstrual cycle and which one doesn't. Here, kangaroo and the elephant shrew. It's the elephant shrew. Kangaroos don't even have a placenta, let alone a menstrual cycle. They don't give birth to a baby, they give birth to an undeveloped fetus that travels all the way up to the kangaroo's pouch and develops from there. There are a lot more quirks about kangaroos and their cousins that we need to talk about, but that'll have to wait until another video. Now try this one. You might think it's the dolphin, but no, it's this bat. But despite having no menstrual cycle and despite not being fertile all year, they have sex all year though. I'm telling you, dolphins are the biggest perverts in the animal kingdom. After humans, of course. Last one. Yes, the chimp, not the dog. You guess correctly, give yourself a pat on the back. I thought I'll end with an easy one. And that brings me to the fact that menstruation is an extremely rare occurrence among mammals. There are only 16 known species of mammals where there's a menstrual cycle. 10 species of primates, 4 bats, 1 elephant true and 1 Cairo spiny mouse. That's like 2% of all mammals. You can see that among the primates, humans have the second shortest cycle length, meaning the second highest frequency. And only bats and the mouse have a higher frequency. And these are the only animals known to menstruate. Another thing I'd like to point out is about how myths on menstruation came to be. One is about how the menstrual cycle is associated with the moon cycle. Just look at this image and tell me. Out of all the species that have all kinds of cycle lengths, what makes humans so special as far as the moon is concerned to align itself with the moon's cycle?
you can find many such myths all across the world in india in particular because many cultures were obsessed with this idea of purity people simply deemed women impure on their periods and forced them to stay away in many other cultures also often guided by misogyny not just periods but even the topic of periods is considered taboo we need to bring this topic out into the open talk about it more because it's just another bodily function and it's experienced by half the population because talking about it is a step towards understanding more about a topic so fascinating and towards developing research that can make the experience a lot more comfortable i want to talk more about such fascinating topics in evolution particularly human evolution so expect more such videos soon and you would have noticed that with this video my channel is making a gradual shift towards more science themed videos i'm going to be making those rationality and critical thinking videos also but those will be on my second channel so subscribe there if you don't want to miss those If you like my content it would be really awesome if you can support me because that becomes my main source of income you can give me a one time support using one of these options or give me continued support using one of these options for which you will get perks that you see on your screen one of those perks is a private whatsapp group that you get to join where we do stuff like this one of our members is an astronomer and so we have amateur astronomy sessions over zoom call so if you're interested in things like that do join i want to thank my highest tier supporters on patreon and youtube if you support me in my highest tiers you can get your name displayed on the video like this if you like this video check out this one on the idea of evolution that's there in certain scriptures i'll see you in the next one till then remember science is dope Thank <laughs> you.